Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, as a disturbing child abuse case ends, a family is still distraught over the baby boy's death. It's just, it's, it's every day. There's not a day goes by that I'm not sitting there in the house or wherever and I can picture him there. Plus hospitals and EMS workers overwhelmed in our region, the major challenge is setting them back from treating critical patients. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Brittany McGraw. John Carlin has the night off. A case involving horrific crimes against a child in the New River Valley has come to an end. Kayla Thomas will spend the rest of her life behind bars for crimes she committed against her late son, Stephen Meek. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder is outside the Montgomery County Courthouse with the heartbreaking testimony from the family. This morning, a judge handed down two life sentences for sexual crimes Kayla Thomas committed against her two-year-old son. The details of this case are disturbing, and it was an emotional morning in the courtroom. She was supposed to protect that baby. Kayla Thomas will spend the rest of her life behind bars after being found guilty of four felony charges for sexually abusing her two-year-old son, Stephen Meek. It's very hard to deal with still to this day. Um, just trying to figure how something like that could happen. Thomas abused her son and sent videos of it to her then boyfriend, Mackenzie Hellman. Hellman was sentenced to life in prison earlier this year for his role in killing and abusing the baby boy. Prosecutors revealed Hellman and Thomas have still been in contact since being incarcerated. To speak and to actually want to communicate, it's, it's, it's horrible. Following her sentencing, Thomas apologized for her actions. I am deeply, deeply remorseful for what happened. Um, I'd give anything to have my baby boy back. I'd give anything to have a second chance to do over and do right by my son. But still, the family of Stephen Meek say the damage can never be undone. I really hope that we can get justice for my son. It's just, it's, it's every day. There's not a day goes by that I'm not sitting there in the house or wherever and I can picture him there. And while this is the last step in the legal process for this case, the boy's family says that they will live with the impact of this loss for the rest of their lives. In Montgomery County, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. A former Virginia Tech football player was also back in a Montgomery County courtroom today, accused of murdering 40-year-old Jerry Smith. In court, three witnesses, all law enforcement officers, testified about the alleged sexual encounters between Smith and Issa Memon Itute. They say Smith was posing as a woman named Angie, and when Itute discovered that Angie was a man, Itute allegedly punched Smith in the face five times and stomped on his head. Emotions escalated in the courtroom with one of Smith's family friends storming out of the courtroom and yelling at Atute as he left after the hearing. Smith's family says they want justice. I feel sorry for them, but I want him put in jail for the rest of his life. For, we ain't going to have jury back. Why should they have him? Atute's defense attorney, who didn't want to talk on camera, told 10 News, it's a tough case and it's sad all around. A $75 million lawsuit has been filed in Bedford County Court claiming decades of sexual abuse by the head of a local compound. One woman is suing World Community, Legacy International, and its founder, J.E. Rash, for alleged abuse she says she endured as a minor. The compound is advertised online as an 80-acre rural property featuring educational and training programs since the 1970s. The woman alleges the actions were non-consensual and she's not the only victim. I, beyond the shadow of a doubt, know that there were women and children before me um, and after me. It was just, it was just known. No official word yet if authorities ever investigated the compound. We reached out to World Community and Legacy International for comment, but we haven't heard back. 
A man is in the hospital after a shooting in southeast Roanoke. Officers arrived to Pechen Avenue southeast to find the victim with minor injuries. Police located the suspect on the scene and he's now in custody. This is believed to be an isolated incident. Henry County officials confirm a student is in the hospital after a hit and run. We're told it happened after the student got off a school bus on Chatham Road near Mountain Valley Church. We don't know the extent of the injuries, but authorities say the student was flown to a Roanoke hospital. The investigation into this is ongoing. Former Rocky Mount officers charged in connection with the Capitol riots still wait for a trial date. The federal prosecutor today asked for more time to assemble a database of evidence involving thousands of hours of body camera footage. The judge set a new court date for November 10th. A new trial date will be set in the new year. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz joins us now with a look at your forecast. And Jeff, the weather that we are seeing today, just a total 180 from what we were dealing with yesterday. I like today better than yesterday. Absolutely. <laughs> yesterday was... We, we want to keep it. Let's keep it. I think we will. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've got the weekend and I think much of next week. Honestly, it looks like we're going to be in store for a fairly dry pattern here for about the next week or so. This after a very potent cold front impacted us here yesterday, brought us a lot of rain, but it's gone now. High pressure is building in, and that's going to be our main dominant weather feature here for several days to come. This evening, we're looking fine for any outdoor plans. Your patio forecast, if you want to grill out tonight, we're looking at temperatures at 7 in the low to mid 60s, falling into the middle 50s by around 11 o'clock. Overall, as we look ahead to that weekend, Friday, we're going to certainly start out chilly. It's going to be one of the coolest nights we've had in about four months. But we're going to warm up in the afternoon. Highs tomorrow, low to mid 70s. We're going to warm up even more over the weekend. Saturday afternoon may start to see a little more cloud cover with maybe even a stray shower along our border counties with West Virginia Saturday night. That's the only game in town because by Sunday, we're back to mostly sunny skies. So no complaints at all about this weekend forecast. Brittany. Hospitals in our region are seeing an increase in people going to the emergency room to get tested for COVID-19. It's hurting them from quickly treating patients with critical needs. 10 News reporter Alexis Davila joins us live at the Berglund Center with the frustrations from frontline workers. Alexis. That's right. I'm talking about a dozen EMS agencies and four healthcare systems all gathering here today, pleading with the public to get their vaccine and to also leave ER departments to create more space for people with urgent needs. The EMS is seeing a 20% increase in calls while wait times are increasing in the ERs. They are, these are just some of the challenges the frontline workers are facing as they battle the second wave of coronavirus. Patients at the Carillion Clinic are younger. They are requiring more care and are having to stay longer in the hospital. To keep beds open, agencies are asking the public to roll up their sleeves for vaccines and to seek appropriate care so hospitals can handle true emergencies. With staff being stretched so thin, they're struggling to meet the demand. We really are challenged, though, with the national shortage and that, quite frankly, um, nurses in particular um, can be lured away to either be traveling nurses or to work at other, other states or other systems um, for, for, quite frankly, quite a bit more money. Now, COVID testing is still being encouraged, so the local health district here is increasing COVID testing availability to help make sure the people can get out of the ER departments and find a different location. In Roanoke, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. Central Health is reminding employees of their vaccine deadlines. The deadline for employees to get the first shot for anyone who is unvaccinated is October 1st. And the deadline to report proof of full vaccination is November 1st. Centra says they're withholding the latest numbers until those deadlines pass. The Star City has another attraction for you to enjoy, where you can expect this new mini golf course to pop up next. And with this year's disasters, lawmakers say climate change cannot be ignored. How they say the infrastructure bill sets up clean energy alternatives. Have a question about current events, new laws? We can help. Just ask 10. It's easy. Go to WSLS.com, click on the menu icon, and click Ask 10. Type your question, and we'll work on an answer. Ask 10 on WSLS.com. There's no time like tea time. Downtown Putt Around is a new nine hole mini golf course 
popping up all over Roanoke. The traveling course will pop up at different locations around downtown. Your first chance to play and get in on the fun is September 23rd at Century Plaza. The course is open from 4 to 9 p.m. Thursday to Saturday and then 1 to 5 on Sundays. It will stay at the plaza until October 14th and then it will move to a new location. We're always looking for uh, new and different ideas, um, ways to bring people downtown, and this is something that we've seen in other downtowns around the country. Um, not super common, but we have seen it pop up here and there, so we thought it would be fun, and now we own a uh, nine-hole mini golf course. If you want to play, you need to buy tickets ahead of time and reserve a time slot. There's limited availability for walk-up slots. Ticket information can be found on our website, WSLS.com. It's going to be a great night to hit that putt-putt golf course in downtown Roanoke. It's going to be a great night to do anything you want to do outside in Lynchburg, too. Why? Look at the sky. Blue skies. Hardly a cloud out there across the Hill City. We will let you know when we may start to see a little more cloud cover again and when temperatures could warm back into the 80s coming up. Tonight, the Virginia League of Conservation Voters hosted a virtual town hall with Senator Mark Warner on efforts to address climate change. Lawmakers are setting an end of September deadline in the House to pass their massive budget bill alongside a separate infrastructure bill. Together, the packages contain billions of new climate investments, and it's to reach President Joe Biden's goal of cutting fossil fuel emissions in half by 2030. You know, there's very few Americans that have not felt the changes of climate change this year. So the, the next bill is needed. We need to make sure that we continue to convert our electric utilities into cleaner power uh, sources. It's unclear whether the president has the votes in Congress to get it done. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. What a difference a day makes, huh? This time yesterday, lots of rain. We had some thunderstorms. Now we're completely dry and we're looking to stay dry here for a considerable amount of time. I will tell you that there's one or two little showers uh, just north of Charleston in West Virginia. As those move to the east, they will fall apart. All right, so let's uh, show you future tracker. And at 11 o'clock, we're looking at fair skies as we head into Friday. We're going to awaken to sunshine. Looks like we're going to have that sunshine all day long on Friday. Hardly a cloud in the sky here for us as we close out the work week. And then as we head into Friday night, we're mainly clear. Saturday is going to be a day where we start off with a whole lot of sunshine. But as we head into Saturday afternoon, it wouldn't surprise me if we start to see a little more cloud cover rolling in this in advance of a little disturbance that could bring the West Slopes a chance for a couple of showers as we head into Saturday night. College football forecast. We've got uh, Wake Forest battling UVA kickoff Friday at 7 p.m. Temperatures at kickoff in the middle 60s. It's going to be a great night for football come Friday evening in Charlottesville. We're also watching the Richmond and Virginia Tech game. Uh, that game Saturday at noon in Blacksburg. Temperatures at kickoff middle 60s with a lot of sunshine there too. You could not ask for better football weather when you look at the high school football games tomorrow evening, when you look at the Wake Forest Virginia college football game tomorrow evening, and of course for the Richmond UVA or Richmond Virginia Tech game Saturday at noon. The weather just looks perfect. It's football weather. It's going to be great. All right, let's talk about the fall foliage. We're starting to see maybe a little bit of a change towards the higher elevations of, say, Highland County, also along the west slopes of West Virginia. Perhaps also a little bit of change in color towards Western Bland, Western Width, and Western Grayson counties. But the vast majority of us have had no change at all in the leaves so far. Your foliage checklist here, we've had plenty of moisture. We're going to have sunny days. We're going to have warm days, and we're going to have cool nights. So check, 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 check. Hopefully this will mean in about a span of a couple of weeks, we're going to see a beautiful show up on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Let's cross our fingers and hope that's the case. Hey, today was breezy, okay? We've had some wind gusts over 20, 25 miles per hour, but those winds are going to die down tonight, and we're looking at winds really from 8 o'clock on, anywhere between about 3 and 6 miles per hour. Temperatures stand 68 in Roanoke, 69 Lynchburg, lower 70s though in Danville. You're 60 to 62 in the NRV. You're in the 50s though up into Hot Springs. 
Tonight is going to be one of the coolest nights we've had in nearly four months. Overnight lows tonight everywhere in the 40s. Three days zone by zone forecast showing that the New River Valley, you are looking at temperatures in the upper 60s on Friday. Your low to mid 70s as we head into Saturday. We're looking at temperatures similar in the highlands, 70 to 74 here for the next three days. And across south side locations, you're looking at highs in the mid to upper 70s here Friday, Saturday and Sunday. For Lynchburg, you are looking at a little more cloud cover by Saturday afternoon. Otherwise, you're mostly sunny. Saturday morning and you're looking mostly sunny on Sunday you may have a little more cloud covers we had in next week, but the weather does look actually very, very quiet for us here over the next seven days and in Roanoke, your warmest days will come next week. Notice Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday highs between 80 and 83. Now again, there's a slight chance for a stray shower Saturday night in the mountains. There's a slight chance for a stray shower on Tuesday. But that's it, right? That's OK. That's nothing mm -hmm. like what we just dealt with. <laughs> Anywhere from a half an inch to over eight inches of rain. Oh, my goodness. It was ridiculous. That, well, was, that was a cold front. The forecast mm -hmm. that that we'll get to enjoy that makes up for all of it. <laughs> yes, it does. Enjoy it. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. And now the Freedom First Sports Desk with John Apicello. Uh, we, we definitely circle the calendar every year for the Valley Star race. And, um, to have the opportunity to go race and be close to home and have your, your hometown crowd and fans with you there means a lot. You know, Clarence is right down the road, so they put a little pressure on us to, hey, this is the home track, we need to run good. And um, But I put enough pressure on myself for that. So uh, at the end of the day, we're going to go have some fun. We've had an amazing year, and we've we've done a lot that, that you know, if, we, if it all ended now, I'd be, you know, thrilled as could be about it. And we just want to go put a little icing on the cake this weekend in Martinsville and hopefully bring home a grandfather clock. Danville's own Peyton Sellers speaking on Saturday's Super Bowl of the Modifieds in Martinsville. He is a two-time Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series National Champion and a three-time Virginia Triple Crown Champion. Sellers has 21 wins this season. Take on 10. I've got the Rams to give Tom Brady a loss. Brooke likes the Vikings over Seattle. Eric has the Bengals upsetting the Steelers. Our Freedom First trio of terror. Brent going with Belichick over famous Jameis. So William likes the Niners over Aaron Rodgers. Sneaky tough pick Falcons over the Giants for Jeremiah. News and notes for your Ryder Cup action opens tomorrow on the Golf Channel. NFL Thursday Night Football. Brittany's Panthers looking to go to 3-0. And, oh, and NCAA Football Appalachian State. Uh, playing a marshal this evening. NBC Nightly News is coming up next. We will see you back here at 7.